Hey, it's Neil here from neilcurtis.me and this is another logo tutorial using the free Photoshop-esque software GIMP. This time we're doing a TurboBectrainer.com logo. So open up GIMP and the first thing I'll do is create a new image and I'm going to make it a large square of 1000 by 1000 pixels and I'm going to give it a high resolution of 600 so we end up with a sharp image at the end. First thing I'm going to do is use the rectangle select tool and draw a rectangle roughly the right shape and I'm going to give it rounded corners and set a radius 10. And then I'm going to create a new transparent layer and I'm going to fill it with a green colour which is a lighter green than the logo and I actually know this value so I'm going to type it in here and then use the fill bucket fill to fill it in the lighter green. And next I'm going to use the ellipse select tool and I'm going to subtract this from the square select that we already have to create a bottom section which has got a curved top edge. So if hit enter now we've got this dotted line of a curved area at the bottom. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill this new curved area with a darker green. And again, I know the value of this. I'm just going to type it in. Then I'm going to use a bucket fill tool and fill this bottom select area with a darker green. So I'm selecting the, the lighter green full square and I've done alpha selection to select the area. Now I'm going to go from a very light green to the original green and I'm going to do a, a blend of this from the very light green to the darker green. Okay and I'm happy with that one. I'm just going to make the bottom a little bit darker because it's still a bit light. It's only a very slight blend. It's made a tiny bit of difference but I'll leave it with that. I'm happy with that. So next I'm going to write in the letters of the logo, which are TBT, and I'm going to use this font, I'm going to make it quite big to start with, so TBT, and they've been written in a green colour, which we don't want, so I'll just change that to white. And then I'll move it up a layer, and when I'm recording the screen it doesn't let me drag the layers up, so I have to go into layers and then stack, and then say lower that top one so the text is on the top. Okay, so I'll select the text and I'll just make it bigger. It doesn't have to be perfect, just an approximate size, the same as the original logo. Okay, and then I'll just place it centrally. And I'll select the text layer and right click and go off at a selection so it it creates a masked select area around the letters. And then I'm going to create a gradient from dark to light grey. And then I'll just draw it up this selected area. And actually before I do that I need to create a new layer and I want to draw this grey gradient on the new layer. So I just want that first one to be a bit dark because that's a bit light. Okay, so that's nice. So now I'm going to select that curve bottom layer and go up at a selection just so we've got that curve. And I'm going to go to my letters and push delete. And I'm going to invert that selection and then I'm going to push delete on that grey lettered area as we just colored in and that means there's only a bottom to it so the top part is the white of the original text shown through and the bottom part is that dark grey light grey gradient which is the effect we're looking for. So now I'm selecting the whole TBT letters again and I'm going to put a black or a, at the end a dark grey outline on it. So I've created a new transparent layer and I'm going to put it on the top of the stack and I'm going to stroke the selection of a line with the two to create a black outline of this turbo bike trainer letters. Okay that looks good so I'm going to create another new layer 
I'm going to do exactly the same, but this time I'm going to stroke it with a white color. And then I'm going to move the black to the top. And again, I'm going to use that dark green curved area as a mask. I'm going to go up and I'm going to delete the black from the bottom part. Of it. So we've got the top part of the TVT is in black and the bottom part is outlined in white. And I'm going to reduce the opacity or the transparency of these outlines. So they're not white, they're not black, they're more of a darkish grey and a lightish grey colour. And the logo's coming along nicely now. It's, it's getting close to being finished. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bit of shading to the bottom dark green area. So using the, the Dodge Burn tool with a large with a large um, pen tool area, I'm going to burn the outside, which basically darkens up the bottom side areas of the dark green, which just gives it a nice kind of shading and a bit more texture and, and it makes it stand out a bit and just add something to the design. So once we've done that, we're just about finished a general layout. Now we just need to modify the letters. So we need to extend the arm of this T out a little bit further. So it's closer to the B. So the gap between the, the T and the B is the same between the gap in the middle of the B. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to just create a square master area and I'm going to fill it with white and then I'm going to give it an outline of black. And then I'm going to reduce its opacity and you'll see I've actually put the outline and the white fill on the same layer and it should be on two different layers, which is a mistake. So I'll just do Control Z to undo that. And I'm going to create a new transparent layer and do my stroke selection and create my outline and a new layer. And then I can reduce this opacity to, so it's the same as the outline of the rest of the T. If I zoom in, we see it is. Then we can go and I'll just use the eraser tool and just delete the part of this square that we've just drawn that we don't want, which is obviously that big vertical line here. Okay, so I made a mistake again. I've reduced the opacity instead of the size of the brush. That's okay. So I'm just pushing delete and I'm on the layer with the new outline. So I'll just delete all that and just tap it here just to reduce. No, we want to keep that bit okay. So I'll just remove this line completely. Okay, and that looks nice. So next we need to extend the T out to the left here. So it's closer to the B and also we need to give it a curve. So I'm going to start by using the rectangle area again and do the same as last time. I'll give it an outline. So I'm going to create a new transparent layer at the very top of this stack of layers and go stroke the selection and then give it an outline. I just want to check here and it's too high, so I'll do Control Z and then using the select tool, I can reselect that box and just move it in a bit. And then I'll redo this outline. And that's better, it's, it matches up with the original T. Okay, now we have that. I'm just going to fill it with white and a new layer. I'm going to move this below the outline and fill it. And actually, I'm going to merge these two sections together because they don't need to be different. And just using the eraser tool, I'm going to go around and just delete any, anything that we don't need. So I'm just going to neaten up this outline so it matches up with the original T nicely. Okay, it looks okay. And then there's a bit of white still showing there from the square, so I'll just go in and delete that. Just tidy up this a little bit. That's fine. Right, so we do now we just need to put the curve on this section of T, the same as the curve that's on the B. I'm just going to find the layer which the outline of that B is on, which is there, and I'm going to 
mask around it, select around it, and I'm actually going to copy this curve and paste it as a new layer. And then we can just use this as our new curve on the T. Okay, so there it is, just paste it in there as a new layer, and I'm going to reduce the opacity down so it's a lighter gray, like the rest of the T. And then just shift it across. And I'll just make that invisible for a second, and then we'll just get it into the right position. I'm just doing this by eye, just seeing if that gap between the two curves is about right. I'm happy with that, so we'll select this white square that we've drawn, and then I'll just use the eraser tool again and just delete around the curve the sections that we don't want. So I'm just left clicking, just deleting the white away from the left hand side of this curve. Okay, and that looks quite nice. So I'll just quickly get rid of this other stuff that we don't need. And this top part of the curve we don't want, so I'll select that layer and delete. Let's zoom in and tidy this up a bit. And then there's just a small area at the bottom that isn't connected up. So I can merge that curved area down onto the white area below. And then I'll just use the color select tool to get the right color gray. And then using the paintbrush tool, a very small size. And I'll just click away and fill in that line. Okay, that's great. That's, that's part's done now. So I can go ahead and merge all of these different layers together because we don't need to edit them anymore. Although actually we don't want that white background, so let's do Control Z to unmerge them, then make the background invisible, and then merge them all again. And I'm just going to go Filters, Light and Shadow, and I'm going to put a drop shadow behind this logo, just so it pops out a bit. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I'll just turn the background on again so we can see the drop shadow nicely. I'm going to delete the background because we don't want that. We want a transparent background in the end. So I'm going to merge the main logo down with the drop shadow. I'm going to crop the selection to crop the image down. And then that's it. We're finished. We just need to export it. So I'm going to export it as a PNG and I'll just stick it on my desktop. I'll just call it TBT for Table Bike Trainer. Logo, export. Let's leave those default settings. And there we have it. The finished Turbo Bike Trainer logo. And make it big, you see it's quite a sharp image because we did that high resolution. Let's open up the website, turbobiketrainer.com. We'll have a look at the original logo on the site and we'll compare it against the one we've just created now. That's that one. And you'll see it's a pretty good match. So there you have it. Quite a simple tutorial, but quite an effective logo design. So go ahead and have a go yourself and see what kind of logos you can create. As always, make sure you head over to neilkurtis.me where you'll find lots more guides and tutorials for making logos and making websites from the very start to the very finish.